Good afternoon, everyone. Why do we educate our children? I think that's a question worth asking, don't you? As, as I have reflected on uh, the brief time that I have to share here, I have given uh, some thought to the nature of education and the philosophy of education. And, and I'm thinking in my mind that really uh, you have two, broadly, two types of education. You have Christian education, and then you have worldly education, for lack of a better term, public education. I would say that the answer to the question, why we educate our children, we, we are going to answer that question as Christians very differently than non-Christians would answer that question. Is that true, yes or no? I think that should indicate to us then that the way that we educate our children should be different. If the why of education is different, then the way of education should be different. In public education, there is not consensus as to what the product is supposed to look like. In, in public education, instead of beginning with the end in mind, you begin with the process and you hope that the process yields something like uh, a desirable product. In Adventist education, we have the luxury of beginning with the end in mind. We know exactly what we want the product to look like, and this can then radically inform the process that we carry out in order to bring about that product. What is the purpose of public education? I suppose it is multifaceted. We need an informed citizenry. We can talk about the basic process of socialization. And of course, uh, it is important that we impart to our young people a basic knowledge set and a basic skill set. And, and that is basically the purpose of public education when we're talking about primary and secondary education. A responsible citizenry, the, the various aspects of socialization, and a basic skill set academically. We begin with a process and then at the end of a public high school graduation, what does it look like then? Well, uh, the product can look very, very different. And I'm not just talking about in terms of individuality, but because we don't know exactly, I'm saying we, because the public is not exactly sure what the end product looks like, the processes can be very different. And as long as you touch on broadly these things that we've discussed here, socialization and basic academics and a responsible, well-informed citizenry, job accomplished. You now have someone who is educated. In the Adventist or Christian educational system, we do not begin with a process. We begin with a product. We want our children to be saved eternally. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, without holiness, no one will be saved. And so what we're looking for are young people who love Jesus, who are committed to Jesus, and who are ready to live eternally with Jesus. Now, that end product, is that going to inform our process, yes or no? radically inform our process. Christian education should be fundamentally different from public education, worldly education. Did you hear what I said there? I don't think you heard it. You either ate too much at lunch or you're not paying attention because you should have given a rousing amen. I'll give you another chance. Christian education should be fundamentally different from public education. Amen. There we go. Christian education needs to be more than just the worldly paradigm for education sprinkled with Christian nomenclature like prayer, eternity, etc. The way that we do the educational process should be totally different because we have a totally different goal in mind. We are not looking only for a responsible citizenry in the here and now. We are looking for a responsible citizenry in the new Jerusalem. Amen. So in preparation for this brief presentation, I thought it might be a good idea to read back through the book Education. 
And I come across this in the opening chapter. In order to understand what is comprehended in the work of education, here we go, in order to understand what is comprehended in the work of education, the broad swath of this thing called education, we need to consider both the nature of man and the purpose of God in creating him. I understand this statement to mean this. If we don't understand the nature of man and God's purpose in creating him, we will arrive at a faulty method of education. Beloved, you can't even mention the name of God in any religio-proselytizing context in a public educational system. Uh, to me, that is education. Uh, it is better yet, it is socialization masquerading as true education. It is not education. If the true purpose of education, as we are told here, has to begin with what is the purpose of God in creating man and what is man's nature, if public education can't even broach either of those two subjects, you are not talking about genuine education as God sees it. You're just talking about a process of basic socialization. So what is the purpose of Christian education? Well, I think it's actually quite simple. It is to give our young people a desire and a beginning and a continuation at whatever process you, or whatever place you are in, whether a kindergarten teacher or a senior, uh, you're teaching seniors in high school, it is to help people be ready for eternity. Amen. And that's not just a cute little phrase that you put on these nice little Adventist education packets. It's true. When a group of Christian educators sits down, uh, from my perspective, they should begin by taking a look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Uh, when the North American Division or the General Conference or the Lake Union or even here in the Michigan Conference, when they sit down and say, let's talk about how we can improve our various educational processes, uh, to me, they need to start in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. And that verse says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Uh, beloved, public education does not sit down in their various board meetings and their various councils and their various uh, superintendents' meetings. They do not say, you know, beloved, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. They are starting at a totally, radically, fundamentally different place. And we need to be careful in Adventist education that we keep ever before us the actual purpose of Christian education, and that is to give our young people the skill set that they need and the character that they need to live with Jesus for eternity. Uh, uh, never shall the twain meet. Can two walk together except they be agreed? In Adventist education, I think we should strive for great academics. But great academics must have a perspective that goes something like this. Put God first and trust Him to help you with the academics. I think we find good instances of this in the Bible. We think of Daniel. Daniel made the honor of God first, and God rewarded he and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says they were ten times wiser. Now, I don't know, I'm not familiar with Hebrew idiom, so I don't know if that is a, an idiomatic way of saying they were very smart, or if it literally means ten times wiser. Either way, they were better off because they put God first. Uh, to me, it, it just goes without saying that young people coming out of Adventist institutions will be better academically. To me, that is a, that, that a no-brainer. If all we're doing is producing better academicians, we are failing. What we need to be producing is people who are heaven-minded and heaven-bound, who want to do everything with excellence, everything to the glory of God, and that larger paradigm will impact their academics and make them excellent students. 